Hi guys, in this video I am going to talk about randomness, unpredictability and seed requirements in case of PRNG. In my channel, I upload tech related videos ranging from Flutter, Python, encryption tutorials to tech tricks every week. So ready to join me in this journey or curious to learn more, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to turn on the notification. Also don't forget to like the video. Now hoping that you have subscribed, let's continue. So let's begin. So we know that PRNG generates pseudo random numbers. Uh, so if you don't know what a PRNG does, then you can see the video which I have provided in the description below. So for just for basics, you can uh, see that the PRNG takes seed as the input and then uh, it goes through a deterministic algorithm which produces uh, a few bits, a few bits of uh, pseudo random bits. And after that, this is this output is provided as input to this to the deterministic algorithm. And once again, it produces a pseudo random bit stream. So this goes on and on until uh, you get the required number of bits for the key. So now let's dive into it. So PRNG generates pseudo random number, but like thus in terms of randomness, the generated stream by PRNG should appear to be random even though it is deterministic. So we know that like uh, when the algorithm is deterministic, our number which is generated is not statistically random. Thus, the number which is generated should at least appear to be random. To check the randomness, we need to apply the series of following tests. And those text tests should check for the following conditions. One is the uniformity. What does uniformity mean is that at any point in generation of a sequence of a random pseudo random number, the occurrence of zero or one is equally likely. So for example, uh, you have a very large a bit stream of key and in that, for example, here one, one, zero, one, zero, one, like any uh, random stream you can consider. And now we are considering a random part of it or the random sequence, then the occurrence of zero or one is equally likely. So what it means is that at any point of at any point of the given sequence, the probability of occurring of one should be equal to the probability of occurring of a zero. So this is what uniformity means. Next is the scalability. So what this means is that like the test applicable to the sequence should be applicable to the subsequence as well. So when we perform a test, uh, we perform it across the entire entire random number. So if we perform the test and it is like whatever the test we apply for this entire thing, it should also be applicable to a subsequence of it. And whatever the subsequence we take, it must be random. Like if you take a subsequence and you see that like those are repeated in between, then it won't be random. And also any extracted subsequence should pass the test for randomness. So it has been covered. Then comes the consistency. The behavior of generator must be consistent across the starting values. So you can't test a PRNG or TRNG based on only single output depending on the seed and input. So what this is trying to tell you is that so you can't test this uh, like generator uh, like TRNG or PRNG based on one value of seed and only one output uh, or one value of uh, true randomness source and the output. You need to check them for a large number of uh, a large number of cases. So like as I was telling that we need to check for randomness. So basically there are almost 15 tests which are performed, but out of them, the three main ones are frequency test, uh, then runs test, and then Maurer's universal statistical test. So in frequency test, what we do is we need to check if the number of ones is approximately equal to number of zeros, which is as expected for a random number. 
and in runs test we need to know what a run is so run is defined as total number of uninterrupted sequence of identical bits bounded before and after with a bit of opposite value so this test checks that if the number of runs of ones and zeros of various lengths is same as expected for a random number so what we can call a run is that uh, for example uh, we have a particular uh, like this is identical uh, bit and then when we have after that we have the opposite bit and after that once again we have the uh, identical bits so now it checks that the number of these runs of ones and similarly we will like we will encounter such values of zero as well so if this particular sequence or the run is like the number of runs is same as expected for a random sequence so this is what runs test mean and then we have the morris uh, universal statistical test it is used to test the number of bits between matching patterns so in a random number or a sequence you may have uh, some like same patterns or same sub sequence in between so in this we need to uh, like check the number of bits which are there in between such matching patterns so for example here i have 1110 and then 011 and then once again 1110 so here you can find that we have this sequence and this sequence so it checks for the number of the bits which are present in between the matching patterns and this is also used to check if the sequence can be compressed significantly without loss of information and if that is called non random next is like uh, once we have Uh, check for randomness we also need to take care of the unpredictability condition so in that we have two that is uh, forward unpredictability uh, sorry forward unpredictability and backward unpredictability so the two types are these and how like what forward unpredictability means is that the next bit of the output stream should be unpredictable irrespective of the knowledge of the previous bits in the sequence so for example you have a sequence here which you have generated and now you shouldn't be able to decide what comes next so this is what is called as forward unpredictability and back what backward unpredictability means is that it shouldn't be possible to find the seed from the knowledge of any generated values so for example you have generated a sequence uh, like this and like you have a particular pattern but you shouldn't ever be able to generate the seed value from this value this is what backward unpredictability means so now let's come to the seed requirements here so since seed is the main input uh for the prng we must take care that it should be secure so the seed should be secure you need to take care of this and we also know that prng is deterministic so whatever the output produced will not be statistically random and thus if the attacker finds seed he can easily find the output so whatever the seed you generate must be unpredictable and in order to do so we use that we use trng that is whatever the seed we want in our prng that is generated by trng so now you might think that if trng is available then what is the requirement for prng so we can see that like because trng is not practical in case of stream ciphers the sender will need to generate a key of number of bits which are as much as present in the plain text so as i had told in the previous video that in tr like uh, if you want to produce a, a key which is of very large number of bits uh, that happens in the case of stream ciphers because in stream ciphers plain text is coded directly uh, bit by bit rather than blocks 
Thus, uh, in this TRNG, the use the key which will be produced will be of large number and it is not easy to generate such things. But using PRNG, you just need to find a secure way to deliver a 58 or 128 bit of key to the receiver. So this this will be as per the requirement of the of the client or whatever or application. So since our TRNG is not practical, we need to use PRNG, especially in case of steam ciphers and all. So this is it for this video. Thanks for watching my video and please do like and subscribe if you like them. Thank you.